Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be uh, looking at the year of the Linux. No, not the desktop. Headset. 2023 is not the year of the Linux desktop, but it might be the year of the Linux headset. So let's talk about it just a little bit. So you probably have heard of virtual reality. It's also called VR. Maybe you've heard of augmented reality or AR or perhaps mixed reality, which is a combination of several different things, including VR and AR, and then extended reality that encapsulates all three of them. What do we know for sure about this market, about XR? Well, KPMG, which is a consulting firm, uh, has uh, predicted that flat screen keyboards and mice will disappear by the year 2030 and that higher education will be delivered on virtual campuses with digital assets as a service. Human thought will be tracked, recorded, and influenced with XR and brain computing devices called BCIS, and those will be giving rise to privacy-focused regulations. By 2030, synthetic uh, data generated from simulated worlds will guide robots to do problem-solving and save some humans from high-risk jobs. The human brain will no longer be used for memorization. Instead, it'll be used to make decisions. The augmented reality market is expected to reach $97 billion by 2028. The combined market for AR and VR, including hardware and software, was $20 billion in 2021, $25 billion in 2022, and is forecasted to reach $31 billion, uh, this year in 2023. How many people use AR in, uh, or VR? In the U.S., it's estimated that 64 million Americans have used VR in 2022, and 101 million Americans used AR solutions in 2022. Worldwide, it's estimated 171 million have used VR in 2022. Some reasons why people purchase VR, AR, or MR uh, devices. So 65% of them said they want to explore new places virtually. 52% said that they wanted to attend virtual courses. 64% hoped to game in virtual reality. 52% want to watch films and TV shows using VR. 42% said they want to watch sports in VR. 38% want to use their favorite social media apps in VR. So what's Linux doing? What are the developers in Linux doing about VR and AR and MR? So there's work that's being done, but it's mostly in the desktop realm. Uh, some of it is privacy and security focused, and some is attempting to improve the user experience of Linux. So Linux XR ecosystem has a number of components. At the top layer, you have the game engines like Unreal and Got It and Stereo Kit and Stream VR. I'm going to talk about a number of them that are in the Linux space, but... For right now, those are the probably the four largest. Most of the effort on Linux is working with traditional 2D Linux applications and moving those into the, the uh, VR space. Linux 2D apps were really designed to use keyboard and mice, so there's some special problems that have to be dealt with unless you want to keep doing, you know, raising the the VR has set off of your face so you can see what's going on. VR and AR hand controllers aren't really all that suitable either uh, because it's hard to pick something up with it. I mean, you can certainly pick things with them, but you have this, this guard that goes over your hand that makes it hard to pick something up. I think, I think the ones that I have seen that seem to work the best are the ones that use uh, hand gestures. The Linux environment that, so there's hand trackers that probably make more sense. One of those is uh, Monado that does that. Um, yeah, so I think gestures is probably a good first approach when looking at trying to move those. I mean, we've been using hand gestures and finger gestures on cell phones for the last 16 years. So 3D applications like Blender benefit from using VR. See, now 3D applications have the opposite problem. They're trying to fit 
and work in a 2D space, and that's not ideal for them. So, yeah, that, that's why you had things like this, the, the uh, space mouse, uh, which allowed you to manipulate uh, things in 3D. OpenXR. OpenXR is a royalty-free open standard. It's actually open source, but it is an open standard that provides high-performance access to AR and VM uh, platforms and devices. So instead of having to rewrite your code for Hive and then for Quest or some of the newer ones that are coming down the line, uh, then you can just use OpenXR and then you have a layer of abstraction. Kronos is the creator of OpenXR and of course they do OpenCL and Vulkan. They do all that development today. So Monado is an open source XR runtime. And that allows you to deliver immersive experiences in VR and AR on mobile or PC desktop. So again, now you've got another layer. So Monado is a complete set of conforming implementations uh, using OpenXR. So it kind of dovetails on top of OpenXR to do that. It's intended to help hardware developers create their own XR devices and to try out new XR technologies, but obviously can also be used to implement applications and UI interfaces as well. Stardust uh, uh, XR is a, uh, is a mechanism that is meant to bring more than just the desktop, they're trying to do both 3D and 2D applications. It's a very small set of developers working on it, but uh, and they are using they were using C++ and then they switched recently over to Rust to be able to do their implementations. So the project definitely seems very active at the moment. Simula VR has been around for a while, and in fact, Simula VR is now implementing their own headset. Uh, which can option well it does I don't know if it optionally includes the NUC, but there's an Intel NUC. It's a 12th gen NUC that's actually built into the headset. Which if you want to use it uh, standalone, then you can because you have all the processing power that you need at your fingertips to be able to do it. You also can plug uh, their uh, Simula VR into. Uh, into your desktop, and all you do is unplug the compute module to do that. So it is a, it is a VR window manager uh, that runs on top of Godot. Uh, and uh, the Simula VR software uh, does have a mouse and keyboard control. Using a, it uses a webcam that allows you to view your real desktop in your VR space so that you can see what you're doing as you're typing or trying to find your mouse. WXRC, that is a Wayland compositor for VR that does use the OpenXR uh, and uh, Monado implementations. However, there hasn't been any activity on that project in quite some time. Uh, it looked to me like there was uh, only one developer working on it and it could have just been a proof of concept maybe. Uh, you know, something that they were maybe trying to seek funding for the XR desktop. So that started out in 2021 as a Google Summer of Code project, and it introduced a new class of output devices to Linux while translating classic uh, UX of GNOME and KDE over to VR so that you can run your normal applications in a VR space. Uh, yeah, so it's currently hosted on GitLab if you want to look at the source code for it. It's out there. Uh, it is active. Uh, and there are people working on it. So so all of this, all of this to me seems a little dark and creepy. Uh, I believe that uh, strong privacy and security controls are imperative before we start exploring these type of technology surfaces. Is 2023 the year of the Linux headset? No. No, I don't think so. Uh, but uh, it's certainly it's, it's certainly an intriguing possibility. That's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on where th you think things could go. Is uh, VR, personally, for me, I can't use it for more than about two hours. Hope to see you all soon, and bye for now.